in Sunday school online, we were literally doing a whole book in the Bible in within a short period of time uh, for children, because so many children, they're not familiar with Scripture, and especially Old Testament. And of course, the devil, whenever we open the Bible and look at an Old Testament book, he wants, he wants us to think that's too old, too complicated, no longer relevant, we'll just go to the New Testament. And of course, his challenge is to erode uh, the Word of God, but we must always um, read it and look at it and expound it and preach it and read it and love it. And the devil, of course, is alive. He's uh, one of the enemies of the Christian, whenever we think of the world, the flesh and the devil. And he's come across Job. I want to read a few verses, and I want you to think about Job and try to find fault with him. And then we think, out of all the people, why did he pick Job? And then we want, as we speak, we want to think, how did Job react whenever um, he got attacked? Whenever we get attacked or something goes wrong, we often say, why, why? But Job never said why, and he, was just, he just took it. So in verse 1 of chapter 1 of Job, and then there's one verse right in the middle of the book which sums it all up, then we're going to cut, uh, go to the very end of the book. So we have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Verse 1 of Job chapter 1, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So if you imagine having ten children, you can imagine how busy your life would be and how they might tempt you, test you, provoke you, all these things. Whenever we read about Job's life, just that one verse, it says he was perfect, he was upright. So just imagine 2021, this is a man in cold rain. We can't find fault with him. He's an upright man. He loves God. He fears God. Of course, that's a sign of a true believer. Whenever you fear God in your life, we are afraid of offending God, a one who has shewed or hated evil or hated sin. Not only did he have 10 children, um, not only was he a full-time dad, but he was also a very busy farmer. Um, I grew up on a farm, and I thought it was big till I went to Australia. We, whenever we talk about we talk about how many sheep to an acre, how many cattle to an acre. But in Australia, it's how many acres to a cattle, how many acres to a sheep. Uh, for example, a good farmer here might have 100 acres. In the church we looked after in Australia, one of the farmers had 10,000 sheep and 100,000 acres. It was just miles and miles of land, so different. But Job, um, his substance was not measured in money, it's measured in animals. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 cattle, and 500 donkeys, or she-asses, and also a very great household. So, in other words, servants, laborers, people who worked for him. So this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. So right across, if you imagine, Coleraine, North Antrim, right the whole way to London Derry, there's one man, he's a big farmer, 10 children, he's a Christian, and he loves the Lord, and all his neighbors speak well of him, and you could not find a fault with this one man. So that's in connection, we're trying to parallel this here. So everything's going well with Job, he loves the Lord. Not only that there, it goes on to read, his family must have grown up now, they've all got their own homes, their own houses, but Job is concerned about his children. And the Bible says in verse 5, Job rose up early in the morning. Job was not a lazy man. Not only did he have a big farm to look after, his children were grown up, but he rose up early in the morning not to start his work. He rose up early in the morning to start his day with God, not just praying for himself, praying that God will bless his animals and bless his fortune, no, he was praying that God will bless, not only bless his children, but he was conscious his children would sin against God. So he was praying on his children's behalf for his children before the Lord, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said it may be. He wasn't aware of any sin. He said, Lord, if my children have sinned, I want to apologize to you for that and I want to bring them afresh 
and please forgive them for what they've been doing. So it's not as if they've done something wrong and Job feels bad about this. There's no, recol- no, note or recoll- no notes here or recollection of something that went wrong. But Job loves the Lord so much, he rises up early in the morning and he says, Lord, if my children have sinned against you, I'm talking to you about it. And I want you to forgive them for that. Early in the morning he'd done that before he rushed into the day. And sometimes we can wake up in the morning and so much to do. So many things to accomplish. So much in our mind. We tend to put God in the back burner. This morning we can learn from Job. When Job woke up in the morning before he went to see his donkeys, his camels, his sheep, even his children. He spent time with God. And that might be an old lesson, but it's right up to date. And it's so relevant for every believer to meet afresh. The Lord Jesus, you can read about him early in the morning he rose up and he spent time with his heavenly father. Because when you wake up, and that's the idea of resting, of going to sleep, so your body can rest, your mind can rest. When you wake up, you're fully rested. And before you're exhausted and another day's work with your mind, your body, whatever, take time alone with God and he'll bless you for that and cursed God in their hearts maybe they've cursed God whatever sin they've done and not only did Job do that this morning look at the last verse the last word in verse 5 Job thus did Job continually every day this was a habit for Job I wonder how many likes their coffee when you wake up in the morning you go to the kitchen you put on the coffee pot Put on the kettle for the coffee, for the caffeine, because it's a habit. Job was in the habit of continually, daily, early in the morning, seeking the face of God. And if you feel, if you don't get anything else this morning, for me alone, that's a challenge and an encouragement to restart my walk afresh this week with God and start off my, my daily walk with God every day. So Job... As far as a Christian goes, ticks all the boxes for me and for this church and any church who wants people who walk with God. So then the devil comes along. And sometimes the devil's not going to attack people who love the devil and hate God. They are no threat to the devil. So the devil will want people who are a threat to him or because they love God. So there's Job. We've just read a few verses, ticks all the boxes, wonderful Christian man, lives his life right before God, early in the morning seeks the face of God, and then Satan comes to ask permission to tempt Job. I'm sure you're familiar with this story as you read down through it. It's quite a sad story because in one day, Job loses all his camels, all his sheep, all his cattle and all his donkeys. Not, not only his farm, his substance, these can be replaced, but then he also loses all 10 of his children. You might know people who've lost a child. It's unnatural to lose a child. A child will lose their parents. That's a natural course of life. But whenever somebody loses a child, it's very unnatural. Very difficult to get over if ever they do get over it. To lose one child. But Job loses all ten children in one day. They're in a building, in a house. Whatever happened, a wind came and the house collapsed on top of them. And every one of them lost their lives. Read that in Job chapter 1 as you go through it. But then it's it's a person of Job I want to focus on this morning. And his reaction. If that would happen to normal people, they would probably fall into such deep depression, they would never ever come out of it. And probably rightly so, because of the loss and the greatness of that loss. But Job, the Bible says, Job, in the end of chapter 1, chapter verse 20, Job arose, he tore his mantle, that was a time, a sign in Bible times of deep remorse, he shaved his head covered himself with ashes. He fell down to the ground and worshipped. This is that man Job 
who had everything going for him. All of his children, his family had grown up, a very proud father, very proud grandfather possibly. All this money, all this wealth, and suddenly he loses it all in one day. And he falls to the ground and he worships God. I'm really, really touched whenever I think of Job. And he says these words in verse 21. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. These are the words of Job. These are the words of Scripture. Verse 22, the last verse of Job 21. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. This is very inspiring. You might find it tough to live the Christian life. You might find it tough to keep going on with God. That's why the Bible is so important to read it, to be familiar with it. It's not a complicated book. It's real life stories. Job was a real person, a real farmer, a real family man, and all this here. Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. But we're going to stay with Job because the devil has taken his animals, the devil has taken his children, and the devil comes back for more. He wants to break Job. He's after Job. So he tries to get his wealth, he tries to get his family, and Job's not broken. Job's a very strong character. He really loves the Lord. He starts his day with God, and he keeps going on with God. So Satan comes back a second time asking God for permission to take and to break Job. God gives Satan permission under one condition. Take anything from him. Take his flesh, but don't take his life. The devil did not need a second opportunity or a second word. Immediately, Satan goes after Job. The Lord says in verse 6 of chapter 2, The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. Do what you want with him, but save his life. The Bible says in verse 7 of chapter 2, we're reading this like a story. So when Satan, so when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the crown of his head. It's not just his knees or his waist or his head, but it's the bottom of his foot, which meant when Job went to take a step, he would feel the pain of those boils. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, he was completely covered with boils. I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. But I know if you burn yourself or you get a wee pin stuck in your finger, you want the whole world to stop till you get that fixed. And here's Job now. He's so badly covered in boils. His three friends come to visit him and they don't even recognize him. In fact, they're so shocked when they look at Job. Not only do they not recognize him, they can't even speak to him. They're flabbergasted. For seven days and nights, they just stare at Job, this wealthy man, this happy man, this child of God, is suddenly like a beggar in the streets with nothing, no one, completely covered in boils. And they're so shocked, not only can they not speak, they don't even recognize him. Read that in chapter 2, verses 3. But before his friends came, Job had a wife, but she wasn't with him in this. It was too much. She was too frustrated. She was too angry. And now she comes to her husband. Verse 9 of chapter 2. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Cursed God and die. The word integrity simply means honest, having strong moral principles. Today you would be called a traditionalist or a, it's good to have integrity. It's good to be honest. 
It's good to have convictions about your morals, having strong moral principles. And Job's wife came, said, Do you still have such faith with God? And she turned around and said these words, Curse God and die. Give up on God, Job. Just give up on life and die. So Job had lost everything. And the one he loved more than anything is now turned against him, telling him to turn your back on God. Look what God has done in you. But Job is the one we're focused on. The last verse, or sorry, verse 10, once his wife said that, he turns round as her husband and said, Thou speakest as one of a foolish woman speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did Job not sin with his lips. Job surely for me is one of the inspirational characters in the Bible. Nobody that I know, humanly speaking, suffered more at the hands of Satan than this man, Job. He told his wife, she was a foolish woman the way she was speaking, and he said, so it's okay when God blesses us, but when everything goes wrong, so we turn against God. And that's a challenge, but all is going well with you. Say, thank you, Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. But when everything starts to go against you, can you stand upright before God and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. The rest of the book of Job it's a conversation between Job and his three friends. And they actually turned on Job and said, Job, what did you do to make God angry? This is all your fault. You must have done something. But Job stands up for himself. And it's a wonderful conversation. But right in the middle of it, in Job 19.25, Job says these wonderful words. I know my Redeemer liveth. Even then, he was able to look forward to God's promise when he would send his son, the Lord Jesus, to this world to take away his sin. Turn over to the very end of the book now as we come to a conclusion. And just remember what Job's lost, everything he's, he's lost. And now we've got Job, he's actually repenting. God, I'm sorry for anything I've done. It's always good to pray for yourself. It's good to pray for others. Job answered the Lord and said these things. He said, Wherefore I abhor myself, I repent in dust and ashes. Job, did you know that Job's fortunes were returned? Job had ten children. God gave him back ten children. Read it. First of all, before this, God punishes the three friends and deals with them. And we're going to think about Job. Verse 7 of Job 42, at the end of it, it says, For you've not spoken. Job is not, God is speaking to Job's three friends and said, In all of this, ye have not spoken of me, the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. God gives us so many opportunities, and we don't take the opportunity to speak of God. And God will remind us of this here. And God said to his three friends, Job keeps bringing me into the conversation, but you don't. You don't. Why did you not? It says in verse 8 of 40, verse chapter 42, My servant Job shall pray for you. Job's three friends turned against him. And now God is acknowledging his three friends are being prayed for by Job. Not only should we pray for enemies or people who abuse us and use us, we're told to pray for our enemies, pray for our friends. Job prayed for his family. Early in the morning he started off, My servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that you have not spoken of me in the thing which is right, like my servant Job. We can learn so much for Job. It's easy to talk about people. The challenge is, instead of talking about them, to pray for them. What a challenge Job is. I love this here. Verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. 
when he prayed for his friends, when our friends turn away from us, turn against us, it's easy to turn against them and to talk about them and condemn them, write them off. That's what Job's friends done in Job. But Job in turn prayed for his friends. Look at verse 12 as we finish of Job 42. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Remember he had 7,000 sheep. Now he's got 14,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. Now he's got 6,000 camels. He had 500 cattle, oxen. Now he's got 1,000. He had 500 donkeys, she asses. Now he's got 1,000. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Verse 15, In all the land where no women were found so fair as the daughters of Job. That lovely how God gave him back, multiplied it, gave it all back to him. Lost his children, give him another ten children, exactly the same. Job lived in old age, 140 years. Saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. What an example for a father, grandfather, and a great grandfather. People can look to Job as a man who loved God, hated evil, and even though he lost everything, humanly speaking, he still praised the name of the Lord. Job died being old and full of days. This has been like a life story of a man in the Bible called Job. Summed up, he lived and he died. And in all of it, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say that today when something goes wrong? Do you take it to heart? Do you go against those people? I'm really challenged by Job's life story this morning. How he kept living for God, acknowledging God loving God, no matter what was taken from him. And nobody here this morning will lose anything in comparison to what Job in the Old Testament lost. And when you do, can you still rise up early in the morning? Take that time to pray for your children, to pray for your friends, your enemies, for yourself. The Bible talks about seeking the Lord early. When you seek the Lord early, you'll find me, God says. And that's why it's so important to reach children so they can also seek the Lord early in life. I trust the Lord will bless these words to our hearts. We're going to finish.